I'm sorry. This is the Johannesburg Lightning Research Laboratory, <coughs> and authored by uh, <coughs> Dr. Hunt. And uh, <coughs> this is an international paper from uh, South Africa, Brazil, and the United States. And uh, this paper will be presented by uh, Dr. Hugh Hunt from uh, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Dr. Hugh Hunt is a senior lecturer in the School of Electrical and uh, Information Engineering, University of the uh, Witwaters Rand. He completed his PhD at the University of Witwatersrand, Witwatersrand, looking at the use of lightning location system data in forensic investigations, and has worked with the South, South African Lightning Detection Network, as well as in Brazil with the RINDAT system. He published more than 35 research articles in the field of lightning and high voltage engineering. Dr. Hunt currently has the Johannesburg Lightning Research Laboratory. Okay, please uh, start. Dr. Hunt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Right, thank you. So thanks everyone for watching my talk. I, I just want to show some um, of the first observations we've made from our new project here in South Africa, which we're naming the Johannesburg Lightning Research Laboratory. Um, and what I'm going to do, I want to just tell you a little bit about Johannesburg and contextualize it. And then I'm going to tell you about our high speed studies we've been doing for the last couple of years, because that really is what kicked off the overall project. And then I want to tell you about our new installation, which we've um, instrumented a tower here, and I'll show you some of our first measurements there. And then I'll just talk a little bit about what we're planning to keep doing. Um, so we're here in Johannesburg at, in South Africa, at the bottom of Africa there. Um, and this now is South Africa, I'm showing you here. And you can see Johannesburg is located quite inland in the country. Also, what I'm showing you in this picture is the locations of our lightning detection network. It's called the South African Lightning Detection Network. Um, it's a FISALA system, and it's um, operated by our National Weather Service. And this is an image of the flash gen density map um, generated by some of the data from this network. This is 11 years worth of da data. And I think really what is important to note on here is as we move up from the coast, we get, we get into our higher density areas with really this region where Johannesburg is being our highest density. And um, you can see that it's in an area roughly 11 to 14 flashes per square kilometer per year, which is a fairly high density. We do have higher areas going out east here. Um, and what I'll show you now is actually an altitude plot of the country. So um, as we move from green to white, we get higher in altitude. And you can see this matches our flash density quite closely as we move up the coast um, from the Western Cape and up the coast from the east here. And particularly from this side, we hit this very high mountain range known as the Drakensberg Mountains, or Dragons Mountains. And um, you can see that corresponds to that very high density area here. And then we come down the mountains, down the escarpment, and we meet Johannesburg. Um, but we're still actually quite high up at about 1600 meters above sea level. And we only really drop in altitude properly once we go north up in the country. So that, as I say, lines up very closely with our um, flash density map. Other interesting things to look at is, is a population density. You can see here in Johannesburg, that's really where all our people are, the majority of our people are concentrated. It's the main economic area in South Africa. So we have all our people in this high lightning density area. Um, this is a map showing our power generation and transmission grid. And again, you can see the majority of our transmission and activity is happening here in this high density area, as well as our conventional generation, a lot of coal powered um, power stations, all in a high density area. Um, also matched with that is our economic activity. So where industry is, and again, you can see all our industry is really heavily concentrated in a high density area. So it makes Johannesburg um, a particularly important place to study lightning and we even though we may not be the highest flash density area we still have 
a lot of problems with lightning because we're concentrated in the middle of um, uh, such a high flash density area where we're doing all our stuff. So if I zoom in on Johannesburg, so this is just a map of Johannesburg. Johannesburg city is here. What I've got overlaid here is a density plot as well, but it's a, it's a smooth plot so we can zoom in on resolution. And you see you've got these two high density points here, which correspond with two tall towers, two telecommunication towers in the city. Um, the Centec Tower and the Telcom Tower, which are about 250 meters tall each. Um, that gives you a view of the towers from out north here, northwest. The Telcom Tower is also referred to as the Hillbrow Tower. It's the area it is, it's in. Um, and we've actually installed our high speed studies began being installed out northwest here. That's the camera set up there looking through the towers at the city center. And you, that's the view you see. So that's the view of the camera. It gives you an idea of how far away it is. Um, also, our university, which we're based, is actually right in the middle of these two towers. So we're right here in Johannesburg, in the middle between the two towers. Um, they're roughly about two and a half kilometers either side. And what we've also got installed at the university is a number of um, measurements. We've got some fast electric field flat plate antenna set up. We've got a weather station and we've got a field mill sensor as well. Um, we've also installed a fast electric field sensor at the location of the cameras. And then recently we've actually instrumented the one tower, the Centec tower with the Rogowski coil, which I'll talk about a little bit more soon. So, as I said, this project really began with our high speed video study, um, beginning with some really nice downward videos. And we've collected quite a few of those. But then, of course, with these two towers, we also get some fantastic upward lightning videos. And that, that's a leader coming off the Centec Tower. And then very often we have simultaneously one coming off the Hillbrow Tower as well. Um, and that gives you a good idea of the type of footage we get. We get. So we started filming in January 2017. And really, I'm going to show you some numbers here from January 2017 to January 2020, which covers roughly four seasons. Now, in South Africa, our, we really have very defined seasons. In summer, we have lightning and thunderstorms. In winter, it's dry, and we don't have any thunderstorms or rainfall. Um, now, our summer period is the opposite of Europe. So we, we are from October to April, roughly, where we have our lightning seasons. Um, so within this period, we've spanned about four seasons. And a total of 68 thunderstorms have come through the city in which we filmed 758 flashes. Now, this isn't actually in taking into account the 2020 to 2021 thunderstorms. So these numbers are actually have increased already. Um, but roughly 651 of those flashes were downward flashes, the majority being negative downward uh, with a few positive flashes. And we've only seen one bipolar flash out of this data set. So one of the really in interesting things we've done with some of the data is um, look at multiple ground strike points. So there you see a video where a stroke attaches to that point A, and very shortly you'll see a second stroke come and attach to point B. Um, and we contributed some of this data to a bigger study. Um, this is the paper, it was published this year, um, looking at multiple strike points around the world. And so this plot shows the number of GSP per flash um, as a function of percentage, and you can see this Austrian data set, a Brazilian data set, our data set, and then the US data set. And our total contribution was about 484 flashes. Um, the interesting thing we noticed here in this is that we seem to have a lot more flashes than everyone else with just a single GSP. And that's because we have a lot of flashes with just a single stroke. Um, our overall multiplicity seems to be lower than some other regions. So we're not quite sure why that is at this stage, but we be investigating that further as we go. Um, of course, the other thing we've done is um, comparing our videos with our lightning detection network data. So this was um, a, a MSc students work. So up until 2018, so it's not that full data set I showed you, but just taking 163 of these videos, our detection network essentially detected 93% of them, which is a good result to see. And this is due to mostly stroke detections, a few M component detections, but the majority is all strokes. Um, also, an interesting plot here is 
the detection efficiency for stroke order. So how well is first return strokes detected and then subsequent strokes. And it looks like a general slowly downward trend, although it seems pretty good across the board with first return strokes really being detected the most likely due to higher peak currents. Um, we've also done some comparisons with our electric field measurement setup. So here's a nice video just showing you the measurement with the video. Um, and what we've specifically looked at here is doing some charge transfer inferences. So taking this uh, basic model and compensating our electric field waveform so we can then look at a change in electric field waveform and see how charge is transferred during the continuing current phase. Um, and this gives a, this is an overview of our data in comparison with a, a bunch of other countries, but really to focus on the South African results here. These are negative cases and then our positive cases. As I pointed out, we don't actually have so many positive cases, so we're not really very conclusive here, but we can get a pretty good average at the stage, roughly about 18.3 coulombs on average in our continuing current here in South Africa. And if we compare that with some, um, other studies around the world, it's fairly similar with Brazil, look, with both of which look a bit higher than studies in Austria and the US. Um, so we've got this downward data set, but then as I mentioned, of course, we also have all these upward events. So in the same time period, we've actually had a hundred upward flashes of these towers. And like I mentioned, um, this is excluding the most recent season. So this number is actually higher, probably closer to 140 some now. Um, and we've got a number of negative flashes. Again, not so many positive events. Um, again, we've compared with our LDN system and as expected, our detection of upward flashes is much less than the downward flashes, but it's still pretty good. It's 56%. And that's probably due to the fact that we seem to have quite a few subsequent return strokes and pulses in our upward lightning events. So we doing pretty good detection of those. And as such, we can detect our upward events on these towers quite well. Um, we've also done a, a location accuracy assessment. And in general, over the, with this data set and these couple of years, we're getting a location accuracy me median under 100 meters. Um, that's maybe a little over uh, or underestimated as it were because of the height of the tower and just being slightly more accurate, but um, still, a good result. Um, so given that these towers get struck so often, we, we really do want to know more about this and analyze it more. And we've started this by last year, we were actually able to install a den detect custom coil system. Um, here is the coil around the tower. It's installed at this level of the tower, just because that's where we were able to get accessibility and get um, you know, uh, necessary power and communications. Um, and that was installed in October last year, just before our, our season started. So we've been able to make some measurements. And what I want to show you now is our very first measurement we made on the tower. So over here, you're looking at high speed camera footage. The tower is located over here. It'll become more apparent shortly. And then here is our current through the tower. Um, I've plotted the current as, as positive, but it actually is a downward negative event. So um, just keep that in mind. And then we get our current pulse, roughly about 150 microseconds under this curve here. Um, interesting also, this event was actually a multiple ground strike point event. This was the second stroke in the event. The, um, the first stroke was off somewhere here in another part of the city, second stroke to the tower, and then a third stroke happened elsewhere um, as well. So that's our one downward event. We've only measured one of those this year, this season. Um, but most of our events are actually upward events that look much more like this. And again, our high speed video footage, then three plots here, all on the same time axes. This one giving us um, our peak, so our, a low gain where we can see the high peaks. This one, a high gain where we can see our continuing current, as you can see plotting now. And then this is our flat plate antenna measurement at, at the university, so about two kilometers from the tower. Um, and you can get a good idea of the type of measurements we're making there. And I'm just going to let that play through so you can see the full event. And very nice video. We have well, our cloud base is fairly high and we can generally see 
see a lot on the high speed video of what's happening in these events. Um, so that's very nice and, and allowing us for opportunity for a deeper analysis of what's actually going on there in all these pulses. And as I mentioned here, we've had 41 events like this over this last season. And, um, and my MSc student, Jason Smith, um, will be presenting these 41 events at the end of the session. He'll be giving some more detail on the, on, um, the cases we've actually measured. So, um, of course, where are we going? We want to do more. We want to collect more data. The obvious thing is we've got this other tower where we have some fantastic events as well. We really want to get it instrumented as well. So we're working on that. Um, and it would be great to get these kinds of, like I showed in this vision, video, where we have both towers um, having upward events at the same time to measure that current, measure the E-fields during these events. And we want to see what we can learn there. And then lastly, we um, actually have plans to instrument a tower on our university campus. It's a building like this. It has a, quite a short tower, nine meters tower on top of the building, but um, we get a nice downward event to that tower every now and again. Um, there's a video just showing, this is not a high speed video, it's just a 30 frames per second camera showing we get a decent event, um, events occasionally. And then of course we have some events in the region and likely have upward non-connecting leaders, which we'd like to look at as well. So we have, we are currently actually installing a shunt. It's gonna be installed on the top of the tower. And then we're trying to get right. We have this custom built shunt from Marcelo Saba and Mali Becerra um, to look at the low current and for non-conducting leader measurements. And we're currently working on um, how we're gonna get both these up on the top of the tower and some of the subtleties around that design. And so in conclusion, um, Johannesburg, South Africa has a relatively high flash density, 11 to 14 flashes per square kilometer per year. Um, we're making these downward observations with the high-speed cameras. We're, we see we've got a multiplicity roughly in the sort of 3.8 range with about 1.3 GSPs per flash. We've got a preliminary charge transfer estimate for our continuing current of 18.3. Um, our lightning detection network seems to have a, a good detection efficiency. And then we are also getting these upward events, quite a lot of upward events, um, and we're making these first current measurements. And then I'd also like to just give a note to um, a number of institutions who have actually donated funds and allowing us to um, drive this project forward. And we're hoping to be able to generate more data over the next seasons and have some good data sets to do good research with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now this uh, presentation is uh, subject to the question and comments. Anyone has questions? Dr. Hunt, I uh, may have a question uh, about the uh, current sensor. What's the frequency range? So we, we don't have an exact um, estimate of it because it's hard to actually, they, it's been hard for them to actually estimate what their bandwidth is, you know, mm -hmm. to generate high currents at high frequencies. We've got mm -hmm. a fairly good idea that it can respond to 40 kiloamps per microsecond on the higher side and then on mm -hmm. the lower side, 500 amps per microsecond. So that's roughly the idea. And we are, um, my, the presentation later will show some of what we're noticing in the measurements and yeah. there are some you know, subtleties that we're, we're trying to unpack there. So I think that presentation will show you more of that as well. I see, thank you. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> okay. I think uh, Professor so, Wang. So that uh, presentation was very clear. clear. <laughs> no need to questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, then uh, please. I see. I see. There's one last question oh, there. Okay. Um, hmm. Is yes, your so res so. research related yeah. to the outstanding? Yeah. Well, oh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll point out that I actually have. 
Basil Schonman's camera in our lab in the background here. Um, I can only, we, we, it is related, we hope to, to be able to do as good a work as has been done here. So, um, but we'll see how we go forward. It's a strong history to rely on. Oh, very nice. Uh, Professor Hunt, I think uh, Professor Wang also has a question. Oh, does he? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, very uh, impressive uh, printing. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is that uh, you said uh, in your cases, uh, many uh, downward light tend to have only single stroke, but for the, the upward lightning, it seems most of your upward light have, uh, how say, a subsequent strokes, you know? So it seems <laughs> it's, a, it's a conflict. So do yes. you have any explanation for this? Um, I, I, at this stage, no, I don't. Um, it, it's something we need to investigate further. Um, I think, you know, we're, with the cameras, we're looking at a very select area. So we seem to have downward events with only single strokes in that field of view. But I think we need to look at the lightning location system data and look further and really see what it's measuring and get a better idea if this really is the case or is it just some characteristic of the field of view we're looking at. Um, uh, and, but yes, we definitely are noticing quite a few return strokes in our upward events. I don't know if the cloud base and, and that would play a role in that to some degree. Um, so it's something we're gonna be looking at further. Um, any ideas as to why that may be would be good to know. Okay, no more questions or comments? Uh, actually, I have a small uh, question, uh, Professor Hunt, if I may ask. Of, of course, yes. Yeah, uh, it's a, like a tiny little question, uh, but like in your presentation, you mentioned that uh, the, like the comparatively, uh, lightning in the area has increased uh, in this year, like uh, in the year that you took the measurements. Like, uh, uh, no, no, I don't, it hasn't increased in this year, no. Like um, compared to previous? I no, I think on average we've been getting about 40. Are you talking about the upward events? Ah, ah just that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. thank you, Professor. So, no, I can't say we've noticed an increase, um, particularly over the years. Um, it's only, we've only been really looking properly for four years. So, we, and, and again, like I say, with the focused field of view, we need to do a more proper analysis to really see if if there is seasonal variation. I see the other question that's that's popped up. Um. Okay, thank you so much.